Hey there guys and gals, it is Ozzy Grimm with the Gamers Grimm and we are back again this week to go over another one of my custom ship designs here in Starfield um, and this is the final uh, variation of the Legion series of ships. This is the Optio and it is the smallest and fastest version uh, of the Legion series. It is a class a ship so anybody out there with sort of low uh, piloting skill and some of the lower uh, engineering skill will be able to build this ship and have their very own sort of legion stylized starship uh, based on the ones that I have built obviously you guys know the Praetorian the Imperator and the Centurion and this of course is the Optio and it is a fast little ship and it has a respectable amount of cargo and space. Although it is the smallest within the Legion, it is not a uh, weak ship by any means. You don't really give up much other than a whole bunch of cargo and a whole bunch of Habs. Uh, so if you are a Class A and you are all about that speed, this is the ship for you, the Optio. So that is what the outside looks. It has the obvious design lines that uh, all of you are familiar with, uh, with the Legion series of ships that I have built. Uh, but we will head in, uh, just like all the Legion series ships, it, par it's, it uh, my goodness, you uh, dock or load in here right in the front, goodness gracious, up into a uh, Hope Tech companionway that goes up into that commander bridge that is so familiar. But this will go back and you will have yourself a lovely two by two living quarters uh, with plenty of room for you to get around and some sleeping. And there is a galley in there for you to cook. And this is where your docker is on this ship. Uh, as much as we like to go as ladderless as possible, this little joker is just going to have to be in the way in this small of a ship. Obviously, there's the galley and the bathroom. I like bathrooms. And then over here, we have ourselves a workshop. So again, it is a Class A ship, so it does not have much in the way of Habs. But the Habs that it does have are super comfortable and have plenty of room for you and your crew to live in. So we will go ahead and climb into the cockpit of the Optio and take off so you can see this bad boy in flight. A lot of fun working on the Legion series. It became sort of a, a thing that I wanted to do because uh, I really love the Imperator and everybody seemed to like the Imperator and the Praetorian. So I made the Centurion and then I made the Optio. So. Depending on your variations of uh, piloting skill and engineering skill, uh, you can build any version of the Legion that you want. Obviously, this ship just cruises at top speed. Lots and lots of boost. And uh, I have some pretty basic particle weapons on this, but there are plenty of weapons mounts for you to mount the different weapons that you want. So let's have a good look at the Optio in flight. And we will get a nice panoramic of that. It's very reminiscent of all of the Legion ships. Uh, just a smaller, scaled-down version. It still has that really beautiful bat wing sort of original bat wing design is kind of what I see it as. And um, this is no different. And uh, I, I went with different colors. You could color this with the the gold and black or gold and red like with the uh, Imperator or the Centurion or go red and white or whatever colors you want I just went with the the uh, the navy and gold so that way it had its kind of its own uh, color palette versus the other ships in the series um, but that is the Optio in flight what I will do now is I will switch over to the shipbuilder and uh, we'll do a quick rundown of how you can build this. It requires a couple of little snapping tricks. Nothing too spectacular uh, to get it to work. But we will go over that when, we are, when we're in the shipbuilder. So we'll be right back. Three, 
two. All right, guys, we are back in the ship builder, and I have the Optio pulled apart. It is not a very complex design, um, so all you will need is, of course, your commander bridge here. I have the commander 500 because I have such I'm high level with high level engineering, ship engineering, so I have access to that. But there are plenty of variations of this commander bridge available that you can upgrade as you level. Um, and then, of course, that goes back into the Hope Tech Companionway Fuselage B. Um, and that goes back into the 2x2 two two Tayo all-in-one berth. You can put whatever 2x2 two two you want here. I just happen to like the uh, Tayo in this particular build because uh, it's just very open floor plan with plenty of beds and a galley in it. And it feels a little less claustrophobic uh, considering that we have so few habs. Uh, on a ship of this size. But right next to that, of course, I have a Demos workshop. For those of you who don't know, I like to use the Demos workshops because uh, some of the other workshops don't come with a research station. Um, the research stations come in some of the other HABs, um, but the workshop for Demos comes with a research station in it. So, in my opinion, if you're going to have a workshop and only a workshop on your ship, uh, I recommend going with Demos because you're guaranteed to get a research station. Um, some of the other ones, the research station is in the laboratory. Uh, some are in, have them in the uh, in like a captain's quarters or like a companion way. There's there's some, some that have them in some weird places, uh, but they are available in all HABs. You just have to know which HAB uh, for which particular manufacturer uh, that they have their uh, research station in. But Demos has theirs in the workshop. So. Enough of that. Um, so what we will do is behind this, right in the middle, is where we're going to put our reactor. In this case, I went a little lower with the reactor, uh, mostly because we need the snap points on this ship. Uh, and it fits really, fits really well with uh, the colorization and theme. You could, I think there's a, maybe one other reactor that has all of these snap points, and I can't remember which one that is, uh, but it has roughly the same power, so you might get 32 out of that one, if I remember correctly. But I went with the Tomahawk uh, because we need those snap points for some of the stuff that we're going to be doing. Obviously, down here is where we have our docker, which is the 110 DP docker from Demos, and it goes in this back right corner, or... Uh, port side corner and the reason for that is in this particular tile hab there's a little desk that sits there so that's all we're cutting off if we put it there if we stick it there it cuts our bathroom off if we stick it over here it messes with uh, some of the storage area and seating and the doors this is kind of the better spot for it but if you have a different two by two maybe moving it a forward one will help uh, maybe it won't I can't say for certain but that is where we're going to put it on this ship. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to go ahead and attach these inverted Stroud cap ports that you see uh, right here directly to that to create an interesting silhouette. And then over here, um, all you have to do is take your Stroud cowling and you're going to kind of flip it to look like this. Um, that's just me being a bit nitpicky because uh, uh, I want the uh get that out of the way i want the uh ship oh come on this is really being a pain but i want there i'm being nitpicky i want there to be uh, a, a matching matching feelings of that and so when you snap this what the heck is going on really really i'm just gonna move it all the way out of the way um but if you look it, it, I'm just being nitpicky. This is square, so there's a lip. I want there to be a lip on this side, too. That's just because I'm a stickler for that kind of thing. But on the top, we will have three of these Stroud uh, Eklund cowling that goes right over the top, like you see here, to match that uh, bottom uh, flow and design. And uh, we'll move this out of the way. And this is kind of where I tucked away my gas tanks. Uh, I like these gas tanks on this build because you can stick them right there and they kind of look like they're part of uh, the ship going back. So when we put in our engines, you'll know uh, what I'm talking about. But that's how you will start that build. 
Um, we will, of course, have our decorative Nova braking engines that snap to the front, which are reminiscent of the uh, Legion ships that we uh, like so much. Um, and so also our uh, grav drive goes right smack dab in the middle right there, just like you see. Um, and we can throw some of our cargo on. We're going to have one of these Polo 2000 cargo holds, and it's going to snap right up under your uh, Tomahawk reactor. And this is where we're going to start putting in engines. We're going to have uh, four of these White Dwarf 330 engines. Uh, you can buy a lesser version of the White Dwarf if you don't have uh, uh, the necessary uh, levels for it and then upgrade them as you level and they snap on just like that which will allow us to snap on uh, that other uh, cargo that we have here the 100 cm ballast cargo hold from sextants shield systems that go under there that's again why we used our this uh, particular reactor had lots of snap points because now we're going to have to snap a nova cowling that's inverted like you see here between that and the engine. And we do have some uh, decorative pieces, which is some of this uh, no, Demos spines. And this is purely decorative. You could put something else up here if you really want. Um, and obviously we have our Nova cowling that comes out from the front there to wrap around our cockpit to give us that fun little design that uh, I like so much in the ships that I've built so far. Now we're going to need to pull off this and we're going to have to do a little bit of something of what you would call a uh, snapping technique. This is where some of the snapping technique comes in. We're going to need to have this one snapped up here and then we're going to need to then put this version of it right over the top and then we're going to duplicate that down and then we can delete those and it covers up our shield which I did not even say what that shield was. It is a Mardock 1040A shield generator. It is uh, pretty good for this build, so we'll just do that one more time so that we can cover up our shield. That's one of the, my goals, is to always try to cover up those shields because uh, with the exception of a few of the shield designs, uh, I don't think they look great. So now we're going to go over the one really weird snapping technique uh, that we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and throw this other Vanguard obliterator on here. I have, I think, four of those and then two of the PBO 50s. I like those particular uh, particle weapons. But what you will notice is that there's no way to snap these little winglets out here. So what we are going to do is we're going to do a little bit uh, of a tricky. We're going to... <clears throat> this is editing Aussie. I just want you to know, I really hate now that you have to go to different star yards. I am so sick. If you think anybody else in this game is, has had to go to more star yards than me or any of the other shipbuilder content creators on YouTube, you, you got another thing coming. That shit needs to stop. If we have the parts available, they should be available at every star yard. Good God. All right, it's... Ozzy and we are back and we're going to show you how to attach your winglets. Um, you probably just heard from editing Ozzy and he was not happy about having to go to another star yard. Um, so what you're going to do to create this interesting effect is you're going to take these Stroud engine bracers like you see here. You're going to need at least three of them to do each side. And what you'll do is you're going to attach um, your pinpoint 4G landing gear to this first one here. And uh, well, here's what you're gonna actually do first. You're gonna attach two, and then you're gonna attach this winglet, like you see here, directly to it. And then you're going to move this one out of the way, and then you're going to attach your pinpoint 4G landing gear, and then you're gonna take this Stroud cowling, and you're going to have it face outward for you. And then you're going to take and duplicate these across. And then you can duplicate it down into that snap point that you see there. And then you will attach your Tayo cab 
aft, and then you will take your other pinpoint landing gear and attach it there. And then you will take your Tayo braking engine and attach it there. And then you're going to have two, one of the two 200 cm ballast cargos that you see here. And I have them sitting in the front, uh, like you see, just like uh, that right there. Um, so we will do the same thing over here. We will attach this, the winglet, and the two Stroud Cap A's like that. But then you will move this one out of the way and then take your uh, pinpoint landing gear and you'll take and flip this out like you see. And then you will take and duplicate that, duplicate that, and then duplicate it down. And then you now have attached this to the ship and this is still attached to the ship as well. Okay, what is in the way now? Is this in the way? Why are you fighting me? There we go. Ah, oh, the struggle is real, people. The struggle is real. But that is how you will create that silhouette in this Class A ship and not lose out on your landing gears. Um, but that is the Optio, guys. Took a, little more, took a little more effort to make the video than I had intended. I uh, guess we'll just file a complaint with Bethesda and their dumbass star yard system where you have to go to different star yards for different parts. Um, but that is the Optio, and it was still a lot of fun to make this ship despite the uh, star yard issue. And uh, I hope you guys... Uh, enjoy making this ship and flying it as much as I do. Um, this has been Ozzy Grimm with the Gamers Grimm. Uh, have a good day.